Hey folks, Kiltman here. And it is the eve of Burns Night. Yeah, Robbie Burns. So tomorrow night, Kiltman and Mrs. Kilty will almost certainly be indulging in haggis, whiskey, neeps and tatties. And uh, we shall be dancing to the piper. Yeah, so it should be good fun. Should be good fun. Today, I'm wearing possibly the most famous, the most obvious tartan. This is the Royal Stewart. The Royal Stewart. If you ever had a tin of shortbread biscuits, I'm pretty certain this tartan was on the cover of that tin of biscuits. It's just synonymous with shortbread biscuits. But anyway, anyway, we're not here to talk about kilts or biscuits for that matter. No, I wanted to kind of talk about the Oscars. Now, yeah, I'm a massive movie buff. Of course I am. We all know this, you know, movie reviews, Movie soundtracks, yeah, movies are my lifeblood, you know. Well, when there's room for a bit of lifeblood other than whiskey flowing through my veins. And, uh, but the weird thing is, I don't really care two hoots about the, the Oscars. They don't mean a great deal to me. I love it when a film I'm into is up there getting nominated. I love it, I loved it when Braveheart, obviously. I loved it when Gladiator got loads. Do they really think Gladiator deserved what it got as much as I love the film? As much money as I spent on props and costumes from that movie. Tattooed from that movie. Um, no, I don't think that the screenplay was that good. I don't think the movie was that incredible. For me, it was. But Academy-worthy? I don't know. And this is the weird, the weird crux of it. You know, for so long, the Academy, we've all known it was being sort of old, you know, bespectacled grey, sort of set in their ways, very staid sort of elderly gentlemen who liked films from the 40s and the 50s and the roaring 20s and 30s and they don't like modern stuff at all. No, good God help us, you know, fast cuts, editing, sex and swearing, violence, good God, no. People dressed in strange colours and costumes and flying about the sky. <laughs> you know, popular mainstream movies don't seem to be never have seemed to be the thing that floated the Academy's boat. But as I say, a few things have rocked that boat, i.e., you know, historical epics. But historical epics given a whole new modern-day slant with modern-day effects and lots of gore and violence. <laughs> Hence Braveheart and, you know, Gladiator. But Titanic, again, that was Oscar bait. You'd expect things like that to be up there Obviously, art house movies to be up there. You know, things like, you know, The Piano, uh, The Pianist, you know, uh, oh God, what was that one where the plane crashed in the desert? You know, uh, and his face is all mangled. Oh, what the hell is it? You know, so The Accidental, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Films that Kiltman, as a rule, doesn't tend to watch or bother going to see. So, you know, Science of the Lambs, when that came up, remember that coming up? dark, provocative, taboo subject matter. And yet, it was Oscar gold, wasn't it, you know? Great performances all round, a wonderful screenplay, brilliant direction. So, yeah, you can see why certain films, even from a genre, will creep in there and get the accolades that, you know, worthy filmmaking should aspire to. This year seems very strange because I'm gonna I'm gonna read out to you the uh, the list of uh, movies for up for best picture. Okay, now, <laughs> right, Bohemian Rhapsody. Now I've seen it, I've seen it, and I reviewed it, and I enjoyed it. I don't think it was great. I, I don't think it's worthy of being you know shortlisted for best picture. Genuinely don't. Uh, I think the screenplay was crap, uh, but it had a couple of great performances. And it did tell a nice version of events. You can say about Braveheart too, because Braveheart was the most historically inaccurate movie I've ever encountered. But in the realms of cinematic storytelling, it still was majestic, wonderful to behold, with great performances, fantastic music, and everything, everything where except accuracy. But since when does accuracy come into movie making? So Bohemian Rhapsody, yeah, but as a film on its own, 
standing up there, you know, toe to toe, shoulder to shoulder with the big heavy hitting movies, the art house crowd. No, don't think it belongs there at all. Green Book, ah, yeah. Viggo Mortensen, I haven't seen it, so I can't comment. Roma, that's by uh, Alfonso Cuaron, uh, Children of Men, uh, a foreign art house picture. The kind of thing you'd expect to see up there. I'm not saying that it's, it's worthy of being there, but it's the kind of thing you expect to see there. The Star is Born, Lady Gaga, yeah, uh, Bradley Cooper, acting and directing. Um, I haven't seen it, not my, not my sort of thing, but uh, those that have seen it that I know all raved about it. So performances and emotional drive and, you know, it's a nitty gritty tale, rags to bitches and, you know, a burn out. It's got everything, it's got the rise and the fall and everything, all the things that, you know, Oscar bait, Oscar crowd seem to relish in a really, you know, roller coaster, emotional, character driven ride. Vice, yeah, again, not seen it. But Christian Bale, I love Christian Bale. Any, any guy that, I've said it before, anyone who transforms their body for a role, and this is a guy who went super, super skinny to dangerous levels of skinniness for The Machinist, a wonderful film, a wonderful, wonderful film. And then bulked up straight afterwards for Batman, you know, in uh, Batman Begins. So this guy goes up and down and up and down. And for Vice, he's playing Dick Cheney. And he, you know, there's no prosthetics there. He ate and ate and ate. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Pasta, pasta, pasta. And he filled out. And I haven't seen it again. But it looks wonderful. It does look wonderful. It seems to cross that sort of barrier of true drama, true life you know, almost uh, documentarian slant on, on what he did. But there's a there's a definitely a comedic angle there too from what I've seen from the trailers and the clips. So I want to see that. And I'm not surprised it's up there given the subject matter that, that, that it's about. Then you've got the favourite. Oh man, I want to see this movie. You know, this is this is the queen who's got um she's got gout. It's about backstabbing and you know Polite society, insults. I've forgotten the girl's name who plays the Queen in it, but my God, she's a stalwart of, of modern British TV and she's brilliant. Olivia, Olivia something or other. Oh my God. Olivia Coleman, because she's up for best actress in a leading role. Sorry, I've got the list there. I should check it, shouldn't I? Instead of looking at myself, I should look at that list. So that looks brilliant. I've heard so many great things about it. Again, it's an art house film, but with a, a hugely dark, biting, satirical edge to it. And some genuine, you know, a clutch of great performances. Great cinematography as well. Fabulous costumes. Again, historical, great character-driven piece. Witty, clever, intelligent, sophisticated screenplay. The sort of thing that you'd expect these old gents to be into. What else have we got? up for it. Black Klansman. Yeah. Now, of course, this is the, the Spike Lee movie uh, about <laughs> a black guy who infiltrates the Ku Klux Klan uh, during the, is it the 70s? Yeah, the 70s. And I've not heard great things about it. Again, I haven't seen it. But I know people who have seen it. And they say, yeah, as much as it's got its lofty aspirations and it's got a lot of comedic elements to it, it just... It, in the end, you're not that bothered. It doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't tell you anything. You know, when it's meant to be some kind of, you know, amazing, you know, probing observation, like Spike Lee can be great, but he gets a bit too far, too indulgent and too up himself and goes off in too many different tangents and attempts to embrace too many subjects and topics. And he goes a few too far with this, from what I've heard. So, I don't know. I'm surprised that's there. But here's the clincher, folks. Here's the one I wanted to talk about most of all. And it's a film that I like a lot. A lot. It's a superhero movie. I love it. I don't think it's great. But I think it's a very good, you know, example of the Marvel superhero movie. With 
a pretty good script, uh, reasonable characters in there, an interesting story, but why the hell it's in this list of films for, you know, <laughs> best picture is not beyond me at all. It's fucking obvious why it's there. What film is it? Come on, you're way ahead of me, folks. Black Panther! Yes, Black Panther. Now, this was a rip-roaring success. It was a huge film at the time because many reasons. It was a well-made movie. It was another Marvel superhero movie, an origin story. Uh, but what it, it ties into the, the overarching um, Avengers and Marvel universe anyway. But, of course, it was the big black superhero movie. And it also approached, you know, the country, the nation of Wakanda, which is hidden away in Central Africa. And it's the height of technological powers, but it's hidden away from the rest of the world. And these guys have, oh, this tribe who, who, who own Wakanda, who've taken Wakanda over and embraced it. They, they, they have a sort of charmed, hidden, hidden life. High sciences, high arts, high technology. You know, they're, the things that they've discovered could benefit humanity. And of course, you know, nefarious people have discovered onto what they've got. And of course, they've got vibranium. Vibranium is the unbreakable steel which makes Captain America's shield. And it can create a lot of, you know, fantastic gizmos and gadgets. Their scientists are beyond, you know, the realms of NASA and even Q at MI6. Uh, but there's... You know, there's a vying for power. There's another tribe. You've got Black Panther himself, played by um, Chadwick Boseman. He was great. He's great. But you've got uh, Michael B. Jordan as his antagonist and arch rival, who wants to overthrow and become the Black Panther himself, and also the ruler of Wakanda. And he has a huge chip on his shoulder because of slavery and racism. He wants to take the fight to, you know... The white man. Well, basically the outside Western civilised world. And his argument is very, very justified. So the film hit a real, tapped into a vein. Um, Black America absolutely took this film under their wing. And rightly so. Because it wasn't just... The, the clever thing about the film is that it didn't just exploit... Oh, hang on. You know, it's about time we had a black superhero. It's about time he gave him, you know, a justified you know, punch in the face to the rest, of, the rest of the world. This guy can do it. He can rock it with the best of them. But they gave a cultural backstory, which was relevant, interesting, and exciting. They made all that a cohesive backstory. You understood the reasons why other tribes were doing what they did, why Black Panther himself was doing what he was doing, and the greater good, the greater war that was out there. A lot of things were going on in that movie. But because of its cultural resonance, its commercial and critical uh, impact, you know, well, its commercial and critical impact was because of what it does. Is the film worthy of all the just, you know, the highly, you know, steeped praise lavished upon it? Um, in some ways, yes. In many ways, no. Because it is just really, when it comes down to it, just a superhero movie. That's all it is. And I love to see a superhero film up there with the big art house hitters. Now, isn't that great? It's a Marvel film getting up there for best picture. Fuck me. When's that ever happened before? Has it happened before? I don't think it has. Mind you, superhero film, I'm sure Superman was up for a few Oscars. I'm sure it was. I can't quite remember now. But someone will let me know. Um, and Superman, justifiably so, I'd have to say. It's a better film than Black Panther. Black Panther is very good. But it's not great. There is no performance in this which makes you think, wow, Oscar material here. This is riveting stuff. Michael B. Jordan gives a great performance as a hard bitten, angry, angry man who's justified in his, in his ruthlessness and sympathetic in what his plight and what he wants to achieve. You get him, you understand him, and that's important. But again, his performance, as good as it is, isn't. You don't watch it thinking, oh, Michael B. Jordan, oh, wow, well, you, you've blown me away here. This is worth it. By the way, I'm only commenting on this film in particular because <laughs> out of that list, I've only seen two of the fucking movies. <laughs>
Bohemian Rhapsody, which I've covered, and I don't think it belongs there at all. Black Panther is a better film than Bohemian Rhapsody. I will say that. But neither film belongs in this list. It's, they don't deserve an Oscar for Best Picture. And the thing is, Black Panther is only there in this list because of its cultural uh, impact upon cinema goers and multiplexes. And the Academy's been kind of like hog-tied. Look, we're going to have to give this film some recognition. We're going to have to do it because, you know, it's made such an impact and we've got to be seen to be, you know, multicultural and diverse. Let's embrace every kind of movie that's out there. And what better than, yeah, we're going to please, you know, the multiplexes with a superhero movie and we're going to please the cultural people as well of, of you know, the, the ethnic, you know, nationalities and creeds because it's their movie and we're now going to embrace them as well. You can clearly see the politics behind this. And it's politics that's got Black Klansmen in there as well, because Black Klansmen, by all accounts, does not, is not worthy of being in there. It is not that clever. It is not that, you know, biting, satirical, intelligent, or whatever. And Black Panther is just basically a good example of a superhero action movie. But it has the cultural aspect to it, and a believable landscape set behind it, and a believable historical heritage behind it. But that does not make an Oscar-worthy movie. Now, I don't want to sit here and be some kind of highfalutin fucking asshole because I don't even believe in the Oscar Oscar ceremony itself. It, it's just back, back, backstabbing, I was going to say, although the fair bit of that goes on too. But it's sycophantic, patronising, backslapping. You all know it is. It's pageantry. It's Hollywood pageantry. And, you know, if you're a movie buff, you're kind of a genuine movie buff, you love it and loathe it in equal measure. You love just seeing, you know, your favourite stars sitting there, seeing their fake, you know, when they when they've lost out to someone else. Oh, fucking no, yeah, you fucking bastard! And listening to that waffly thank you speeches, and then obviously one of the compares, the host will drop a few clangers. You know, this sort of shit is what makes it worthwhile because it's showbiz. It's just showbiz, but actual accolades to worthy filmic creation and invention. Great directors, great screenwriters, great performances. You know, really speaking, you know, the ones who are totally worthy of it don't get it, don't get recognised. And it's the kind of obvious targets that sweep it, sweep the board every time. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that Black Panther's going to get this. The very fact that it, Black Panther and Black Clansman are actually in there, the Academy is going to sit back, well, boys, we gave them a shot. We put them in there. It's patronising. It's condescending. You know it is. If those films were worthwhile, I'd be rooting for them all the way. All the way. But likewise, if uh, I'd seen A Star Is Born, which I haven't, I'd be braving for that. So, I don't know. I don't know. Black Panther is up for quite a few awards, actually. Um, it's up for... Um, Best soundtrack as well. Now I don't mind that because let's let's, let's go down and see the um, what's in that. I will find it. I will find it. Original score, right? <laughs> and surprising enough, we've got Black Panther, Black Klansman, <laughs> uh, Isle of Dogs, Mary Poppins Returns, and this film. If Beale Street could talk, what is that? I keep seeing in forums. People just call it Beale Street, Beale Street, or just Beale. And they go, oh, yeah, Beale, Beale, Beale. And I'm like, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I'm shit, aren't I? You know, I'm doing an Oscar rundown, and I really don't even know half the movies. Oh, visual effects here. Avengers Infinity War. Yeah, well, you'd expect the Marvel, the big Marvel superhero action blockbusters to fit into that kind of category. And score, I would expect them to be there as well. Um... Christopher Robin, ain't seen it. First Man, I wasn't impressed with First Man. Gotta be honest. Ready Player One, didn't that come out years ago? Ready Player One will probably get visual effects because the visual effects are astonishingly good. The film, I didn't think was much good at all. It was okay. It was watchable. It was just Spielberg on pure schmaltz nostalgia. Uh, just, you know, he was just phoning in all the things that he loves about cinema. That's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, but 
it, it's forgettable, you know. Um, and Solo, a Star Wars story, up for visual effects. Really? They were nothing to write home about, I'll be honest. Nor was the film, you know. Nor was the film, sadly. Mm. So, and I think they're up for like costumes as well. Uh, makeup and hairstyle, you've got Border, don't know what it is. Mary Queen of Scots, I haven't seen it yet, but it does look fabulous. And Vice, <laughs> um, what else have we got? I'm trying to find something that's, you know, at least interesting. Um, okay. Film editing, Black Clownsman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favourite, Green Book, and Vice. Um, I really couldn't say much about what I think about any of that, really. I mean, Bohemian Rhapsody's got good editing. Production design, Black Panther. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Te technical wise, Black Panther is up there. That's definitely up there. The favourite. That's got to be a favourite for it because I've, I've seen so many clips of this movie and I've seen so many, uh, you know, sort of behind the scenes snippets and that looks sumptuous. It look, It's proper English period piece. Um, but the camera work itself is so clever as well. It's built for what? It's built for cinema. It's it puts you into these stately boardrooms, ballrooms, you know, uh, across these lovely country gardens, of the manor house and these, um, you know, these castle grounds, sweeping down corridors of oak and wood and pine, and then it goes into like a weird kind of fishbowl effect, where you know the whole all the menagerie of the of these bizarre characters who are the hangers-on of the Queen are all the way around and you can't trust him, you can't trust her, this is my friend for now but I'm gonna stab you in the back and that fishbowl effect really is quite cleverly done so I can see the favourite has got to be up there as a favourite um, the Battle of the Buster Scruggs costume design again this is the Coen Brothers western episodic one isn't it again I, I love the Coen Brothers but I haven't seen that Cinematography, Cold War, again, hey. The favourite, exactly. Never Look Away, I haven't looked in the first place, so I can't comment. Roma, don't know. A Star is Born, yeah. I have a feeling The Star is Born is going to do pretty well um, in this sort of thing. Be because, you know, again, you've got a breakout star and you've got Lady Gaga, Gaga, <laughs> Gaga, Lady Gaga, coming into an acting role and being really good. Bradley Cooper being a very charismatic and popular and critically acclaimed actor going into directing a movie with, you know, a famous, you know, rock, pop, princess, diva. And uh, so it's not surprising, you know, that that's, that's going to get a lot of recognition. And rightly so, I would suppose. So let's go on to the uh, best director, Spike Lee, Black Clansman. Powell, Pol Polakowski for Cold War, Yorgos Lanthimos for the favourite, uh, Roma, Alfonso Cuaron, Vice, Adam McKay, uh, actress in the leading role. For Roma, we have Yalitza Aparizio. For the wife, you got Glenn Close, Olivia Coleman for the favourite, Lady Gaga, Star is Born. Melissa McCarthy for Can You Ever Forgive Me? Can you, what? What's that? Never heard of it. Actor. Actor in a leading role. Christian Bale for Vice. Bradley Cooper, A Star Is Born. Willem Dafoe for At Enemy's Gate. Sorry, At, At Eternity's Gate. At Enemy's Gate's a different film altogether. At Eternity's Gate. Rami Malek as uh, Freddie Mercury for Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, I know, I know, I'm kind of like on the fence. I'm going like, oh, it's crap in this way, but it's great in that way. The one thing I can't take away is Rami Malek's performance is outstanding as um, Freddie Mercury. Once he gets past, once you get used to him speaking past, you know, the teeth of Mr. Ed. <laughs> and Vigo Mortensen for Green Book. Love Vigo, love Vigo. Um, but I haven't seen Green Book, so, oh shit, I don't know. I've seen the trailer for it. Looks interesting. Um, I think, I think I've, I've done the lineup as much as I'm going to do. Oh, no, 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 no. Best screenplay. Let's have a look at best screenplay. Original screenplay. The favourite. Yeah. First Reformed. Green Book. Roma. Vice. 
So you're seeing a lot of familiar names are cropping up again and again and again, as you would expect from the Oscars, because this is what it's all about, isn't it? But, so, the favourite's got to be in there. The Star is Born has got to be in there. They are the front runners, without a doubt. Roma, yeah. But if the Academy starts to try to really, you know, remember when Scorsese got at the Oscar, the long delayed Oscar for The Departed. The Departed did not deserve it. The Departed was not a good film at all. The original Hong Kong movie was infinitely better. And uh, The Departed was, it was just paint by numbers. I know some of you would disagree. I reviewed that film for AV Forums many, many moons ago. And I was honest about it then. About its plus points, many of them, but about its bad points too, many, many more of them. And I got into a lot of, you know, toing and froing and a bit of, you know, there was a bat forum battle going on. But I stand by it. Scorsese should not have got an Oscar for that movie. It isn't that good. You know, they only gave it to him because they owed it to him. And when you see that, that's even worse, you know. Because you've made a mistake, but you should give it... A retrospective one, we're going to give you the Oscar for the fucking films that you did and we just snubbed you. Not for this pile of shit that you made here, but now we feel kind of so guilty we're going to give it to you anyway. So, Black Panther and Black Klansman, these two films are clearly shoehorned in there because oh, it's going to make us more acceptable to a much more diverse you know, you know, know, range, a much more diverse audience. It's going to justify us and redeem us in the eyes of all these other races and creeds. But I don't think all those races and creeds are going to see it, are going to see past what you're really doing. And it's just a little, look, we're doing it just for you guys, to keep you guys happy. No. So, anyway, folks, that's my two penneth worth on uh, the Oscars. Am I going to watch them? I will see some of them. I will see some of it. But I'm not that bothered. I'm really not that bothered. You know, this is the thing. Because you're into movies, people will always ask me, you know, oh, what do you, what do you think about this? And I'm like, I don't really care. I've just seen something else as well. Richard E. Grant up for, you know, actor, best actor in a supporting role for Can You Forgive Me? And apparently he's brilliant. Oh, Sam Elliott as well, for a start. Sam Elliott, the world's greatest living cowboy. Sam Elliott, for a start, is born. Adam Driver for Black Klansman. I don't really think so, do you? Uh, Ma Mahashala Ali for Green Book. And uh, the great Sam Rockwell for Vice. So, uh, you know, this is, this is bullshit because I haven't seen most... 99% of these films I haven't even seen. And I'm going, well, I think they, that's justified. Yes, of course, of course. Well, that shite am I talking? <laughs> I don't even know. It's weird that the, only, the films that I have seen... I'm like going, they shouldn't be there. <laughs> so I've seen the least worthy candidates in this, this lineup. Anyway, folks, for now, mm, I have prattled on long enough about the Oscars. Fucking gongs. You've seen them things. Would you, would you be arsed? The best time I ever saw an Oscar was in the air. Uh, the, the great, the great trashy uh, exploitation flick from the early 80s the last horror film, known as a uh, fanatic in some areas. Caroline Monroe and Joe Spinell reunite after the video nasty of Maniac. And uh, she plays Jana Bates, this awesome horror actress. Joe Spinell, the awesome Joe Spinell is the fanatic. And there's a great, he makes a movie whilst murders are being committed. And they, they fabulously film this during the Cannes Film Festival, guerrilla style, so you've got real people who are strutting on the you know the catwalks and all this sort of like premieres and they're guerrilla filming during it. The great Caroline Cal Monroe, who I've met, I've met her, oh, a goddess, an absolute goddess, and she's you know the object of his desires. But she comes under threat by the real killer. Everyone thinks it's him, but it's not him. And he gets handed, you know, well, you Vinny, you finally made your movie, and they they throw him an Oscar, and he goes, ha ha, in this sort of dream fantasy sequence as he revels in the flashing lights and photography and the adoration, and it just crumbles to this gooey mess in his hands, almost like it was a living statue that he's just crushed in his own fingers, and his brains and guts ooze out. That was the best Oscar 
you know, reception, Oscar award giving I've ever seen. So, folks, anyway, that'll do for now. So I'm going to see you all <laughs> later. Oscar bait. Ah, I haven't turned it off. <laughs>